All right, people, I'm calling this one on the road to Judgment Day. <clears throat> and this all stems from the sewer authority suit that was what pretty much got me into this whole thing. And that there's some really interesting stuff in here. I think that, that some tools that you can use for yourself that I'm going to use for myself. And I think this is going to wreak havoc among the Bar Association because it's going to start to expose the entire fraud. And not only is it going to expose it, it's going to show you a remedy on how to, how to get judgments here. And how to really put them in really bad positions. So let's start going through some of this. You know, I, I'm, I'm of the belief that, let me say, I know that God uh, hides truth in plain sight. And I, I, I think the only way to get to that truth is through him. And, uh, you know, you, you look around, you look at these people. These people are lost. You know, these people you see wearing masks and, and running around. These people are lost. They have no idea who they are. They have no idea where they came from. They don't know, they don't know their rights. And they actually believe that they are a property of uh, these, these quasi-governments. These are just corporations that are uh, masquerading as governments. And these people believe that they have duties and obligations to these corporations. And that's really a sad state. Uh, and it's really, when, when you look around, it's the reason why things are so bad. Uh, people have literally lost the ability to think for themselves. And through education, through media, through schooling, uh, they've just handed over the ability to think for themselves and they just follow along like good little sheep. And this is why we're in the, uh, the position we're in right now. So the reason I'm doing all this stuff is to help the average man or woman break out of this and to hold these people accountable for what they're, what they're doing. And uh, listen, uh, just we've been very successful getting things stopped, very successful getting things thrown out and stopped. But to me, that's equivalent to sort of catch on the burglar breaking into your house. You got him, and he says, oh, you got me. Uh, leave me go, and he just wants to walk away. You know, uh, uh, and that's pretty much what happens when you get something knocked out. Though it's great, it gets somebody off your back. But those people really owe you, uh, they owe you redress. They owe you uh, money damages for, for what they've done. And so uh, my hope, too, is to get people the redress that they deserve for, for the wrongs that have, been, that have been done against them. And so, like I said, I, I think this stuff's, a lot of this stuff's in plain sight, and we, we've just missed it and because uh, we, we've been lost. And thankfully, the people on my channel and uh, Warrior Calls channel and some other channels are waking up and they're, they're starting to fight back and I'm hoping just to give you a couple tools you know uh, and I think the information this video crosses over into many many matters you know just because this is this is about a sewer extortion bill uh, this stuff in here can cross over to any matter that you're involved in and uh, you got to look at this process I know people get overwhelmed when they look at the thing they go oh, I got to learn all this stuff you know, and, and you can't do that. You got to look at each little lesson or each little tutorial or things you learn from me or from other people as just a tool that you can use when you need it. You know, it, it, I remember the first time I, I, I come from a music background and uh, I was a professional recording engineer and producer. And I remember the first time I walked into a studio, uh, you know, a real nice studio when I was in college, Berkeley College of Music. And I looked at the, the huge console they had there. And I just looked at all those buttons and I thought, oh my God, you know, I'm never going to learn this stuff. And then once you get into it, you start to learn that once you learn one channel strip, well, now you know pretty much all those channel strips in that section because they're all duplicates. And then you learn the other section, the monitor section. And then you learn the outboard gear. You learn what a delay is. You learn what a, a noise gate is. You learn what a reverbs are. So instead of taking that all in, you... you break it down into little chunks, little pieces, little tools. And uh, you'll get to a certain point where those tools will all start to link together. And something will happen. You'll know, okay, I go here. Here's my process. I do this. I do that. I do this. Because I, you need to know where you're, go where you're going to wind up. In other words, you don't jump into something unless you know where the final thing is, where you want to go, because you're going to get lost along the way, unless you know where you, your destination is. And your destination, all the stuff you're doing, these notice of liabilities, and uh, I mean, the, the notice of claims, notice of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, all, all, all the affidavit paperwork we're doing, that's a process to move you to a, to a final process, which is basically to get redress damages for, for, that were created by these people. So, so that's why we're doing it, and this is just another tool that's going to that's going to move you along the way to get there. Now, there's two kinds of liens. There's a there's a common law lien, 
And let's look what a common law lien is. A common law lien and legal definition of it is a common law lien is a lien against personal or real property that is not a statutory lien. Look at that. Not statutory. All the stuff they're bringing against you, their driving code, their tax code, it's all statutory crap. Okay? A secure, now look, that is not a statutory lien. A security interest created by agreement or judicial lien obtained by legal or equitable process or proceedings. Well, aren't your affidavits a, a legal and equitable process? Uh, isn't that, aren't these a sort of aren't these agreements? Because you're telling these people, listen, and you've got 30 days to respond. If you don't respond, you tacitly agree and you acquiesce that everything I put down in this affidavit is true. So, geez, they, they've, you, you've come to agreement with them, and you're actually operating through a legal and an equitable process because you're operating through uh, affidavits. And, and affidavits cross over into the, the, the legal realm, the judicial realm, and they cross over into the commercial realm, you know, uh, uh, the UCC stuff. You know, they, they, they operate in both entities. So, uh, you know, they, they just can't sort of cast off your affidavits. Because if someone says, I don't have to answer your affidavit, I'm under no obligation to answer your affidavit. But yet these people have been making legal claims against you. Well, and here's what they're actually saying, and this is what you call them on. So wait a minute, you don't have to answer my affidavits. So that means that I'm either your property, that means I'm owned by you, and you don't have to answer to me, or I have a contract with you. And I'm unaware of both things being being true. I, I know I can't be owned by you because slavery is illegal. And I know I don't have a contract with you because I, you'll never find my wet signature on anything that has another man or woman on the other side of that document. So I don't have a contract with you. So if you're saying you could just make liens, you could just make liens and claims against me, well, then you're claiming I'm your property, and uh, uh, y y y there's no accountability on your side. You, you have to be accountable for your claims. You just can't come out and make crazy claims that some statute gave you authority to do something to me. That's a, an irrational, crazy claim. That, that somebody wrote something down on a piece of paper called a statute or a law, and you think that that statute or law that you've got no personal knowledge of, you weren't there when they wrote that, you believe that little piece of paper over there gave you authority to, to make these claims against me and, and to do these things to me. And when I call you on it by way of affidavit, you're telling me you have no obligation to respond? Really? Well, let, let's bring that into a real court of law and let, let's see how that works for you. Because I think you're going to get knocked on your rear end real quick. Now, let's look at a commercial lien. Let me show you the fraud of really what they're doing to you. Uh, you know, what are commercial liens? Look at this. The term commercial lien or just lien loosely refers to the filing of a UCC-1 financing statement under the laws of UCC Article 9 in a state registry uh, as notice of an interest in some collateral. Basically, this is the, uh, the, the registry. Uh, uh, the, the, basically, when you file this with the... Uh, what that means is when you file this with the county recorder, you're making a record of it. And... Uh, Look, the financing statement lists the name of the secured party and the debtor. See, they always call you debtor, and they, they tried to do it with me when they filed paperwork against me. Some petty fogger shyster attorney <laughs> referred to me as a debtor of my own property. Isn't that special? Now, here's where it really they start to get tripped up on this stuff. Look, the secured party and the debtor, and includes a description of the collateral, or simply refers to an object directly by serial number or other identifier, such as the vehicle identification number found on most autom automobiles, or your house, you know, if they list your, your, your uh, house property. Look, the filing of the financing statement, that's the UCC-1 statement, does not by itself establish a valid enforceable lien. Oh, how about that? But it's merely a reference that indicates there might be a possible valid lien. Now look, the actual lien right to enforce a lien arises from a contract. We know what contracts are. Offer, acceptance, consideration, meeting in the minds, and, uh, which means full disclosure, uh, and must be signed by two living sentient beings. That's a contract. Look, called a security agreement between the secured party and the debtor. Look, a security agreement must be consensual in writing the collateral should be listed, the intent of the debtor to grant a security interest should be clear, 
and it must be signed by the debtor pursuant to the statute of frauds established by UCC, blah, 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 and the definition to authenticate. So what they're telling you is you can only take on a debt by contract. Uh, someone that writes a statute down or a law, they call it a law, and they can't assign it to you. You can't assign contracts to people. So unless you, whatever that law they're coming at you for, uh, or this what are ordinance, unless you sign a contract, and just as it's stated here, it's all spelled out, and, and you, you willingly enter into it, there's no debt. There, there's no obligation because there's no contract. So these attorneys, these petty fogger shyster attorneys, are, are they're, they're breaking, they're violating numerous constitutional rights that are secured. They're violating laws left and right that they're bound to. And uh, so I just want to show you, you, you read through that. that that's, everything they're doing is a fraud here. Now, let's go look at my uh, sewer authority case real quick. And, and what we're doing here is, what you're doing with your affidavits and your notice of claim is you're actually taking a commercial process and you're sitting on top of common law and, and you're using their own processes against them. You're banging them over the head with their own stuff. And the power you have is you could come in and testify to your documents. In other words, you can, even though you have an affidavit, it's still considered hearsay until you actually bring it into a court proceeding and put it on the record. But it's still, even though it's still considered hearsay, it's a powerful document because you're on that document stating that, hey man, I'll come into court viva voce, which means in my own voice, I will testify that everything in here is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Well, we all know the county, the borough, the township, we, that's a fiction. There's no Mr. and Mrs. County coming in. There's no one here to testify. We know the attorney's got no, no jurisdiction over you. He's got no authority over you. He's got no standing in the matter that he's moving against, moving with. And he's got no personal knowledge of anything he's filed or stated in his documents or whether he's spoken. So he's got no standing in this matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to use their process against them. And what this petty fogger shyster attorney did in my matter is he filed what's called a municipal lien. Well, that's created by statute. Well, gee, I'm going to take that and just change that to common law lien. And everything he's got in here. Now, we already know he's got no, no personal knowledge of anything, this guy. Look, he filed it in the name of a corporate fiction. That's fraud right there. That, that's, that's illegal as hell, what he's doing. Because, he, listen, he could do this stuff against another corporation. I'm not a corporation. I don't care what they... They could put my name in friggin' lights for all I care. It doesn't make me a corporation. It doesn't matter whether it's uppercase or lowercase. It's a meaningless thing. But a, a case... It, it, it doesn't matter whether you're uppercase or lowercase. It doesn't grant them any authority by putting your name in uppercase. It's a ridiculous claim. But what's not a ridiculous claim is this man who's, look, he's Esquire. First of all, we don't have titles in this country. There's no nobility in this country. So, sir, if you're calling yourself Esquire, you must be a foreign agent because we don't have titles in here in this country. So, sir, you, you've just identified yourself as a foreign agent by calling yourself an Esquire. Now, to further compound your problem, a, a man is claiming to speak for a corporate fiction. He's going to speak and act for something that doesn't exist. This is a fiction. There's no Mr. or Mrs. Sewer Authority. And the Sewer Authority, a fictional entity, does not have rights. Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck don't have rights. They're fictions. They don't exist. So this petty fog of shyster is claiming to speak for this fiction. So everything in this document's fraud. But what he did is he created a lien out of thin air because he believes this, some municip municipal lien act, there it is, the Pen Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Municipality Authorities Act of 1945. He believes that gives him authority to do things against my property. Now we just read what a commercial lien is. It's got to be by contract. I have to agree to it. <laughs> Everything's got to be spelled out. I have no agreements with him. I have no agreements with the persons running this corporation. There's no contract in this matter. So what this guy did was he forged a lien. It's by fact, he forged a lien. Because in order for a lien to be established, 
you, you have both your state and federal constitution will note it. It's right there in your state constitution and federal constitution. You have a right to a trial by jury in all matters, whether criminal or civil. You have a right to trial by jury, and you also have a right to face your accuser. You need, you have a right to, to challenge your accuser face to face. Listen, he's not my accuser. I got no contract with this guy. I, he's got no, no authority over me. He's got, he's got no standing in the matter. So he's not my accuser. Is, is this my accuser? This is a fiction. There's nobody coming in under this name. And I'll guarantee there's nobody, there's, there's nobody from the company that's claiming to represent this corporate fiction that's going to come in and face the questions. So there's no accuser in this matter. So this entire thing's fraud. So then we know that for a fact. So if we go here, here's what he did next. And look, another thing, look, everything's rule of civil procedure. So what the, they did, look, the rule of civil procedure number 236. Listen, the rules of civil procedure were written by the legal society. I'm not a member of the legal society, okay? I have no obligations or contracts with the legal society. The legal society does not get to write rules that apply to me. I'm not their property. I don't have a contract with them. And the legal society doesn't get to place these rules in front of me to, 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 ham, uh, to, to hinder or, or to, to stop my access to an open public court. These are open public courts. These are the people's courts. These are not the legal society's courts. So the legal society cannot stop me coming in and accessing an open public court. They don't get to, they don't get to tell me how I must access the court. So look, notice is given under Rule Civil Procedure 236. Look, he has to move. This petty fogger shyster attorney has to move under the Rule of Civil Procedure because otherwise he'd have to, he'd have to move normally and, and uh, adhere to the Constitution, which grants me a right to trial by jury. He didn't do that. He created a lien with the stroke of his pen and his buddies at the courthouse Look what they did. They, they issued a, a, they called it a judgment. Look, it, it's unbelievable. Notice is given under blah, 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 blah. Judgment in the above case has been entered. Oh, yeah? Who signed this? Let's see. Office of Judicial Support. Oh, geez, I don't even have a name here. Nobody even signed this document. First of all, the Office of Judicial Support, they have no jurisdiction over me. They have no authority over me. They have no standing in this matter, and they got no personal knowledge of anything in this matter to be issuing judgments, especially when there's no, been no trial by jury in which a debt w was uh, was adjudicated for which a lien could be made from the debt. So I this, this these are basically administrators, secretaries, clerks that are basically granting judgments. They don't have that authority to do that to me or to you. Okay, so this document too is fraud. And look, th there's... Uh, Time and legal liability do not permit the Office of Judicial Support to give docket information by telephone. Really? So then what? I got, I got to waste my time and run down there face-to-face -face and get information for some illegal proceeding? I, I don't think so. So then look what happened. That this, we, just see, we know that this is a fraudulent judgment because there's no, there's no proof, and, and I, there never can be proof that these rules apply to me. Yet these... Petty Fogger shysters took these rules written by the legal society and they believe it gave them authority to create a judgment against me. Bull, 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 bull. So then let's look what they did. So then the Petty Fogger shyster attorney, he uh, petitioned for a writ of Seer Fossius. And what a, this writ is basically, you know, let, let's read what it is, it'll tell you. Uh, It'll say, where is it at there? There. A claim of a delinquent lien or liens has been filed against you. If you fail to respond to this lien as set forth in the accompanying writ, you may lose your home and her personal property. You must take action within 15 days from the date uh, on which you were served with this notice and writ by entering in writing with the court your defenses or objections to the claim, claim set forth against you. You are warned that you, if you fail to do so, the matter may proceed without you. Any judgment to include loss of your home or personal property may be entered against you by the court without further notice. Isn't that special? So here's what happened in this case. So this Petty Fogger Shyster petitions for this writ, 
and the the court clerk look office of judicial support office of judicial support do you see a signature here look nobody signed this thing they're, they're, these people just first of all I don't know who issued this where they got authority to issue it and they won't even put their name on it that's how fraudulent and, and corrupt this thing is and by the time I got this, by, by the time I got the judgment notice, which is not signed, there's nobody that signed the judgment, by the time I got the writ, which is also unsigned, I never got service of process. I, I, I never had a process server knock on my door and say, here, Mr. Fadgel, you've been served, here's a copy of the summons. Not only did I not get that, I didn't even get the mailing. That This idiot, petty fogger shyster attorney, John Michael Sheridan, believed that this statute applied to me. And in his statute, he doesn't have to give me process of service. He could just send me a letter. Well, guess what? I didn't even get his letter telling me that this case was going on. So these two documents were issued by this court before I, I ever had any notice anything was going on. And there, look, look, they're finally, they, they, there's the... There's the writ, the issue of the writ. Great. Office of Judicial Support. I, I can't even read that. That's chicken scratch. Print your friggin' names on there so I know who you people are. I can't read that, and I can't read that. I don't know who you people are. I don't know where you think you got authority to issue orders against me and, and issue writs against me. So this whole process, they, they're going to get banged real bad for this entire process. I'm just starting to move. Mr. Mr. Judge is about to get a, a judicial claim filed against them. Then he's going to get a notice of claim. He's going to get affidavits. He's going to get criminal complaints filed against them, both state and federal. And then I'm going to thump him with a federal district lawsuit because everything he, he contributed with in, in this with the attorney is complete fraud and it's easy to prove. So this is how they're moving. This is their process. So you got the, the, the fake attorney uh, creating a lien out of thin air, goes to his buddies to the courthouse. He files a writ of Seer Fasius to, to get it, uh, uh, to extract the money from me. And then uh, uh, before I ever get proper notice, I get threatened with that letter. Hey, you got 15 days uh, to, 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 you know, to rebut this. Well, I did by affidavit. And my affidavit was never answered. And well, an unrebutted affidavit stands as truth. But still, they tried to push through with this process. And I think the reason, one of the reasons they did that is, I, when I first got into this, I, I didn't didn't really have a firm grasp of, of affidavits and how to use them. And then once I start digging into it, technically the document, the first document I filed, and the only reason I filed that document, which was which I called an affidavit, was to halt this process. I wanted to halt this 15 days. Well, now we're coming up on almost two years, so I've halted it, okay? It's been halted, and uh, I've thrown a lot of monkey wrenches into this, these proceedings here. So that's the only purpose I filed that, that affidavit, which I thought was an affidavit, but technically, I could look at that affidavit, and, and it could be claimed that that's not an affidavit because it's missing some key elements. But I could turn it into an affidavit if I had I walked into court and just uh, read it under the record. But So this is, this is what they're doing. This is the illega illegality of what they're doing. Now, what we're doing here is we're using their processes against them. That's, that's what your affidavit of status is. It removes all presumptions of who you are. You're telling them, listen, I'm not your resident. I'm not your citizen. I'm, I'm not your subject. You're filing an affidavit of fact, which pertains just to this, this individual matter. So my affidavit of fact pertains to this fraudulent lien filed by this petty fogger shyster attorney. And... The notice of claim. I filed notice of claims and affidavits against the sewer authority, the sewer authority's administrator, and against the petty fogger shyster attorney known as John Michael Sheridan. And you also want to do a notice of deficiencies and, and ir irregularities. So what I would have done, had I known more at the time, is I would have taken Mr. Mr. Petty fogger shyster's municipal lien, and I would have circled everything on here that's fraud and numbered it. And then on a separate sheet, I would have stated how th that number is fraud on this element, or that element is fraud on this document, because that puts them in a real bad position too. Because I'm showing them, listen, I know exactly what you people are doing, and you're not going to be able to support any of it. So that's what we're doing here. Look, it, he filed a writ of seer facies against me. Now, look, uh, let's read what a, seer, a writ of seer facies is. It's a judicial writ <coughs> requiring a person to appear in court and argue why a judgment against them shouldn't be annulled. 
Well, we know that thing I just showed you is not a judgment because no one there has authority to sign a judgment against me without a trial by jury. So that's not even a judgment. But it says a judgment against them should, uh, shouldn't be annulled, vacated, executed, or enforced. Look, while well, federal law has abolished this practice, in other words, the writ of Seer Fossius doesn't exist in federal law. Many states still use Seer Fossius. In most cases, this is in reference to a payment from a judicial case. Great. Let's look at what a writ of quo warranto is. A writ of quo warranto is not a petition, but a notice of demand issued by a demandant to a respondent. Remember, your, look at your, your affidavits and your notice of claim. We're calling them respondents. Claiming some delegated power and filed with a court of competent jurisdiction to hold a hearing within 3 to 20 days, depending on the distance of the respondent to the court, to present proof of his authority to execute his claimed powers. Now listen, if these people are coming against you with statutes and codes and ordinances, file a writ of quo ranto against them in, in the court. Well, look what that's making them do. The respondent to the court to present proof of his authority to execute his claim powers. So if they're claiming these uh, ordinances and statutes and codes apply to you, hit, hit them with a writ of quo ranto and bring them in and make them prove their authority to execute these assumed powers they have. Because you and I know piece of paper can't apply to a man unless you're their property, which you're not, or you have a contract with them. Even we looked at the UCC stuff. you got to have a contract. You don't have a contract with these people, yet they're making claims and moving claims against you. So hit them with a writ of quo ranto. So if you're in a matter and you want to halt this proceeding, hit them with that and make them come in and explain how they have this authority or power to do what they're doing. Now, I don't know if your state's going to have a writ of seer facius. Uh, you'll, you'll have to check. I know Pennsylvania does. Uh, I don't know about other countries. If, if you know, there, if there's a comparative to this, there, I'm sure there is, because these everything here is done by you know the, the bar uh, the association set all this stuff up, all this nonsense. So everything is very similar. It's going to it might be under different names. But so people in other countries, you're going to have to dig a little bit to find out if you have anything like a writ of seer facius or some kind of petition that acts like a writ of seer facius. And the same thing with the writ of quo ranto. You, you have to, you're going to have to dig a little bit to find out if, uh, if your state has a writ of uh, quo ranto. And same thing, other countries, you're going to have to find out if your country has that or if uh, uh, there's something uh, like a petition that, that's very similar to, to the writ of quo ranto. Because listen, if they're going to make claims against you, bang them with this. Make, make them come in and you know, make them prove their their authority to be doing what they're doing. Because you and I know they don't have this authority. And uh, so, if you go back and look at what we've learned here, hmm, what if, what if I turn around and I file a writ of seer facius? in this matter uh, because look writ of seer facius is basically stating requiring a person to appear in court and argue why a judgment against them shouldn't be annulled vacated or executed geez aren't your unrebutted affidavits don't they become a tacit agreement and uh, uh, acquiescence that, that everything you wrote down in your affidavits are true don't, don't they sort of fit in here? You know, isn't that a judgment? So what I would tell you to do is, uh, after you file your affidavits against them, send them, look, just like they sent me this fake notice of judgment. Look, they, they just made this stuff up. Notice of judgment. <laughs> look, signed by, look, uh, the date signed it. <laughs> Purdy Office of Judicial Support. Great. Well, you know what? Why don't you call yours a notice of judgment? Because they're in default. So what you would do on that notice of judgment document, don't go back and relitigate everything you've already got them on in your affidavits. Just go back and state, hey, on this date, I sent you certified mail number, ba 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 ba, whatever your certified mail number is. It was received on this date, and you were you were given 30 days to respond, or whatever, how many days you, you've used, and you failed to respond, which puts you in default. 
Therefore, you have tacitly agreed and you acquiesce that everything in my affidavits is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So call that a notice of judgment. Title it notice of judgment. And just put that in there that, hey, listen, you were provided a proper notice and opportunity to respond to me by way of affidavit. You know, you can only respond to me by affidavit. You failed to do that. So now that you failed to do that, I'm issuing a judgment against you in this matter. And then what if you took that into court just like they did here? And you file for a, a, a judgment, a common law judgment, a common law lien here, because that's what they did with me. They, they, they just filed for a, they're claiming it's a commercial lien. And look, we already know that they don't even meet any of the elements of a commercial lien. So what if you file for a common law lien against them or a judgment, common law judgment against them, and you support it with your unrebutted affidavits? And the only document you really need to bring in is the last doc document, the notice of judgment against them. And showing that, bring the green card in, showing that they were served and they, they're in default and, and they didn't respond. And what are you going to say? We, we have no obligation to respond? Well, wait a minute. How can you just make claims and judgments against me? Uh, am, am, am I your property or do I have a contract or obligation with you? Of course you've got to respond. So I don't want to show my hand fully. I just want to tip it a little bit. I want, I, like, I only want to show these people what I want them to see, when I want them to see it. And I'm just tipping my hand just a little bit because I'm not, I'm not going to show everything right now of what I'm going to do because I've got more remedies on top of this in federal district court. But uh, these are some things that you really want to dig into. Common law lien, and you want to dig into these writs or something similar to these writs. Because these are two powerful tools for you to use. You know, when, in other words, you, you've got a judgment against them. When they don't respond to your affidavits, sorry, that turns into a judgment. You know, you just can't make claims against me, uh, uh, you know, unsupported claims against me. Now, because what you're doing is you're compromising my property. Technically, my estate you're compromising. Well, you don't just get to compromise my estate. You better have, you better have a, you know, just cause to be, to be making your claims. And when you get them in default, you got you have basically a judgment against them. So, so send them the, the, the notice of judgment. You know, state in there that you know, hey, you guys were provided proper notice and opportunity to respond. You didn't respond. Not my problem. That's your problem. And bring them in and make them answer for why this uh, judgment that you've garnered against them uh, shouldn't stand. And who's going to come in? The the county. That's a fiction. The attorney, he can't come in and answer you because the attorney has no jurisdiction, authority, standing, or personal knowledge in the matter. So when you get that filing into the court, who exactly is going to come and fight your judgment that you secured by affidavit and you have proof with the green card? And as far as the green cards, listen, if these dirt balls are going to write COVID-19 on there, I don't know who COVID-19 is, where the signature is, but here's what I know. When I went to that post office and I did certified mail and I paid the $859 for what it costs, uh, I paid for a signature on, on that green card. And I don't have a signature on that green card. Uh, I don't know who COVID-19 is. Is that a Mr. COVID-19 or is that Mrs. COVID-19? So what I tell you to do, you get a, doc, a card back like that, go back to the post office and tell them you want a refund. You paid for a signature on this this card. You don't have a signature. And if they say, well, to give you a printout, because what they do is they have a printout. They can give you a printout from the handheld of the uh, postal delivery uh, person. Uh, they have a handheld. They make them sign. But the post office... They should put that online so that you could access the signature. They don't do that. They hide it from you. And they're online. When you, when you look up your certified mail uh, tracking, it's horrible. I mean, it, does, it doesn't even show you where it came from, who signed for it. It doesn't show you any, anything relevant. But you can get that from the post office if you need it. Get them, make that, print that out. But I, I would demand a refund because, listen, I paid for a signature on that green card. This is not a signature on this green card. I want my money back. And, and perhaps that'll stop the nonsense of, of this COVID-19 stuff, people writing this on the card. So let me get this straight. They could write COVID-19 on there, but, but they can't have the person sign it. The person could sign the handheld, but they can't sign the card. What, is the card uh, somehow more dangerous than a handheld? 
No. Listen, these are ways to almost circumvent the legal process. So bring it back to them. Tell them, listen, I want a refund. I, I paid for a signature on this card, and, and I didn't get a signature back. So here's how you're... I'm going to call this, like I said, this is the, the, the road to judgment, basically. Uh, once you get this lien or uh, claim filed into the court, uh, they're done. They're done. Nobody can come in and answer you. The county can't answer you because an, an attorney has to speak for the fiction. And we're not going to let that happen because, first of all, we want to see evidence of the attorney's agency. You've seen that in the Northern Ireland video, the, 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 them two gentlemen. They got, a, they got the, the prosecutor to run from the case when, when they asked for her agency. <laughs> there was, where's the principal that hired you? Who hired you? Because the, the sewer authority didn't hire John Michael Sheridan. And I, I banged him over the head with this stuff. And, and he got, got so bad that he started lashing out, telling the judge to, to find me and, and that the board gave him authority. And two days later, after he filed that into the court, he got taken off his own case. They got him out of there because I start putting criminal stuff into, the, into my filings into this court. Hey, hey, Mr. Judge, uh, you have a duty and obligation to... to Take action when crimes are reported to you. Well, look, I just reported these you know, eight, nine, ten Pennsylvania crimes that this attorney committed against me. So I'm going to need you to do something here and stop this guy. Because I'm now a victim here. This guy's, this guy's damaging and harming me. Listen, do your job, judge. Stop this guy. And that got Mr. Attorney removed off his suit to get him out of the way. And as soon as they brought the new attorney in, he filed a notice of appearance in the matter. First thing I banged him with... I objected to his notice of appearance on the court record because uh, he's got no jurisdiction, no standing, no uh, no personal knowledge of any matter to be involved in here. And I also filed, a, right away, I filed a mail fraud complaint against him. And I sent it to the attorney, the mail fraud complaint, and I also put it on this court record that I filed, filed a mail fraud complaint in this matter because I, I want a record of what's going on with these people. So... Here's your, I, I would almost call this an administrative remedy, because even though you bring in the court into this process to get the order signed, uh, the court, their hands are pretty much tied, because they can't, they can't just uh, overrule or cast aside your affidavits. They don't have that authority, okay? Judges can dismiss motions. Judges can't dismiss affidavits especially one sworn under the penalty of perjury. So once you get your, your filing into the court, they're going to have a problem. And for those people that have existing matters going on, why don't you look into this one right here and go file it against them. Whoever's coming at you, the attorney, go file it against them. Make them come in and explain where they got this magical authority to make their papers apply to you. So... It's just a start. I just wanted to, to lay some groundwork, show you that there's there's some things in the works. I, I said I don't want to show my full hand, but these are some tools you could start working with right now, and you can dig into these tools. And, and uh, listen, my, my goal is to, to, to damage the Bar Association to the point where they're fearful of coming against any man or woman. Let them stay in their own little playground. Fiction versus fiction in court. You're not a fiction, okay? You're a man or woman. That attorney has no right being involved in any matter with you. His bar number, his membership into the bar, gives him no authority to be involved in any matter with you. And every time some petty fogger shyster attorney sticks his head up like whack-a-mole, whack him down again, okay? Hit him with agency and start filing affidavits against him and a notice of claim against him. And go ring his insurance bell. Go ring him. Go go file a bar grievance against him. And the judge, go file bar. Go file if he's a, a lot of these judges keep their bar uh, numbers also. So go file a bar grievance against the judge, and go file a judicial complaint against the judge. Go ring the insurance bell twice for that judge if he's got that bar number. So show these people their liability and start using their tools, which they used against me. I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna hand right back to them. Little jujitsu move. Take their energy and spin it around and hand it right back to them. So that's what I'm going to start doing with them. So uh, I hope this is helpful. I hope you got something out of this. And uh, don't let these people get you down. They have no power whatsoever. It's all I'm going to huff and puff and blow your house down. Except your house is really a, a house of bricks. 
They want you to think it's a house of feathers that they could just blow and it'll just collapse. That's what they have you believe in. That's what they've taught you. But know your house is actually made of bricks. And they can huff and puff all they want. And they are not going to blow your house down. So don't let these people get you down. Take this stuff little by little, piece by piece. And uh, just take that first step. Just start filing stuff. Because what you're going to learn is, uh, especially when you have some success, any, any little bit of success, as soon as you have that first bit of success, you're going to be hooked. And you're going to want to learn more. Uh, it's like anything. It, it'll reward you. Once you have your little success, I don't care how small it is, uh, once you have your little bit of success, you're going to dig into this stuff even more. Because now you're going to want to learn another tool and, and how to execute this other tool to use against them. And that's what we're doing with these bar grievances. And I really want to thank uh, Randy Kelton and especially Brett Fountain for the, that bar grievance document. That stuff is gold. You should be downloading that stuff and using it against these attorneys continuously. Because it's always the attorney coming after you. It's the attorney claiming to speak for the fiction. Go after the attorney. Go ring his insurance bell. Because you're going to ring his bell with that, uh, with that bar grievance and your notice of claim, and you make that notice of claim fairly substantial, $100,000, $200,000, $300,000, you make it substantial against Mr. Attorney. And uh, you're going to ring his insurance bell again. Now they're going to be a little worried because the insurance company is going to be worried and they're going to say, hey, you better have this guy now because if he brings you into court, you're done. We're going to have to pay this claim. And first of all, your rates are going to go up. And, and if it's too bad, we may have to drop your insurance which means Mr. Attorney's not going to be able to be an attorney no more. Now, what better gift would you like to give back to these petty fogger shysters that are making your life hell? The Bar Association is the architect of all this fraud. Go give them a dose of their own medicine and go bang them over the head with their own crap. And then go get paid for what they're doing. So keep your head up. Don't let these people get you down. You're more powerful than you think you are. Take care.